Oh my goodness. I have so much falling into autumn homework. <laughs> so I'm going to get started on it right now. I've actually had the most productive weekend I've had in a long time. Um, I'm going to be stitching out. There's a uh, pieced pumpkins and I thought, should I go ahead and stitch them out um, two at a time? You could put two at a time because they're four and a half by four and a half inches. If you are doing the, uh, if you're adding the background quilting, but I'm going to go ahead and just stitch them one at a time. So I'm using muslin instead of stabilizer. And if you've stitched with me before, you know I like it because I like the way it feels and I like the way it feels in my final project. And at this point, I think it is cheapest. At the store, we carry 90 inch muslin and I just cut it with a fabric. So uh, this is actually eight and a half inches. I, I usually cut nine and for some reason, the last thing I just did, I was like, nine seems like so much. I've never thought that before until this last stitch out. So I cut this strip eight and a half inches. Here's everything I need for my piece pumpkin. I've already uh, sorted everything. And piece pumpkins on page 32 of your book. Here we go. Quilting is going to be at the end. We're going to add the quilting stitch at the very end. So let's go ahead and load it up. It, this is just piecing in the hoop which is really fun, really easy. I'm going to, I just sent a picture to Patrick and the kids who are not, none of them are here. My uh, kids are in Monterey on a big boy and big girl trip and Patrick is in Salt Lake. So I'm gonna start by putting a uh, pre wan bobbin in just a regular white one. I just finished stitching up two projects. Michelle and I split the projects and I'm going to do two of the projects for treats for my boo, which is adorable. Absolutely love it. We'll have those kits at the end of the week. Go ahead and slide my hoop on and then let's load up our design as far as a uh, thread color I think I'm just going to use linen uh, the piecing doesn't make a difference you don't see it so it doesn't matter what thread you use but you want to have a color you're going to like to do the quilting stitches Wouldn't it be amazing if I could, I also like warm gray. Like that's really pretty too, but I've been really boring. Although I've been looking at other people's projects on, um, you know, I follow Kimber Bell and a couple of other things and I'm starting to think, I think it was Kathy Boland posted something and I just loved it. Uh, but I'm starting to think I need to start being a little more bold with my quilting because half the beauty of the quilting stitches is they're so much fun, you know, so maybe I need to be more of a risk taker. So, um, let's go ahead and load our design. And it's in your book, but I also did make your, I was going to add these colors. Haven't done it yet. We're going to go embroidery. Pieced pumpkin. You have two of them. Pieced pumpkin, pieced pumpkin. Are we using the same? We are using the same quilting stitch for both of them. We're making two blocks. So it's autumn three, four by four. I have an instructor's pack. So, whoops, I did not want to do that. I have an instructor's pack, so falling into autumn with uh, the background quilting. They give you just enough to make the project, which is really what I think they should do for everyone. Here's my four by four. I'm going to set it, and then we're going to go ahead and add. And let's add the pieced pumpkin. I put it in my lower USB. That's why I'm touching that one. Embroidery files. And here's my pieced pumpkin set. It's going to be centered. So you're just going to leave it exactly the way it is. Choose your hoop size. I've already selected mine. Mine is the five by seven. That's what I'm going to be using. Um, 
it's too big for the four by four if you add the quilting design. If you don't add the quilting design, you can do the piece pumpkin in your four by four. And they are not combined in this screen. I could combine it by touching this button, combining it, saying okay, and then um, they move together. However, you some people don't have that feature on their machine. And if you don't have that, I'm going to uncombine. I'm going to uncombine them. Right now they're all pink. If I hit this button, now they'll move separately. The piece pumpkin and the background quilting will move separately. You don't have to combine it in this screen because you can just touch embroidery. And this screen, our layout screen or your secondary edit screen, that's where it's combined. Um, I already slid my hoop on. There it is. So I can move this. It'll move as one and it won't go outside of my embroidery field. I'm going to scoot it up and then I can just economize my muslin as I rehoop and move down. First thing that it wants to do is it wants to do a placement stitch for the batting. And so you can see your stitches. If you just touch this button right here, this is going to go forward and backwards and you're going to see what you're stitching out. The other thing you can do is just touch layout or edit, whatever that button is, and you're going to see that one is behind the other, so there, it's right there, but I'm probably going to be skipping some steps, so I'm going to go into this screen. Alrighty, go ahead and stitch out your placement stitch for the piece pumpkin, and while it's doing that, I'm going to spray my, um, let's go ahead and spray the batting. And I think this is Peace Pumpkin for two. I'll just lay that out right there. Here is my batting. Where's my spray tent? There it is, all the way across the room. Oops, sorry. So clumsy. Okay. This is my dime spray tent that I'm balancing on my legs right now. It's like a little pop-up tent. It folds up really small. And this is my spray that I use. And we carry this at the store. I think it's the best spray. So you just want to make sure you don't spray at your machine. I do occasionally. But for the most part, I spray in my spray tent. And you don't need a ton of spray. There we go. I wasn't like, that wasn't full force. I was barely spraying. You want to spray the bumpier side. One side's a, a little bit nubbier than the other side. That is the wrong side. And then we're going to just lay it down inside of the square that just stitched out. All right. We are going to do the template. So we're going to skip the next steps because we are not putting down one whole piece. We're gonna be piecing. So what we need to do is we're skipping this step, which is tacked down for the batting because we cut it two size, so skip it. This is gonna be for the background fabric. We don't really have background fabric. We're gonna piece the top. That's tacked down for the background. We don't have that. And the quilting is gonna come at the end after we piece everything. So you gotta remember that. And uh, for this, it's going to go ahead and it's going to stitch out the template. You know what would help is actually a color that you can see. So why don't I take this out? I like to use a light gray a lot of the times. If it was just me, I would just do like the, the cream. But I like a color that you can see. And just be careful because the foot might want to push your batting a little bit. So I'm going to keep my finger on the start stop button like that. Like what is going on there? That seemed super, super low. Um, let me go in here and check my uh, embroidery foot height and just make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go ahead and just raise that up just the tiniest bit so it doesn't drag my, um, so it's not dragging my stabilizer around. Let's see. That's really strange because my foot looks really, really low. Hang on just a second. 
Okay, I just rebooted. And that's normal. I don't know what was going on because my foot was just like, it was so low. And uh, even when I raised it and started again, it stayed low. So when in doubt, just restart, right? No need to fight it. It's like a computer. Sometimes it needs to be rebooted. This is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit stop. Let's just make sure. See that? It's going under. There we go. So you've got to watch it if you're pre cutting. You got to watch it because that would have just dragged it all around, made a big old mess. And now that's stitched down, I think we're pretty good. Here's my little piece of pumpkin. Color isn't going to make a difference for this. After we do this, it says um, to avoid to avoid damaging the printed felt. Do not use an iron on this block. Important. No iron on this block. That'll damage your felt. Good to know. Okay. First thing it wants you to do is it says stitch the piecing template right directly on the stabilizer and place the piece one fabric right side up completely uh, centered over section one. So um, piece one fabric, piece one fabric is got to be the, the plaid. Oh no. Section one. Section one. Oh, good thing I'm looking at the template is actually this little, little itty bitty stem area. And so it needs to be this dark piece right here. I'm going to give it a shot of spray. Now you know where I'm spraying and what kind of spray I'm using. So you're not going to see it again. And I'll probably use this for both of them because it's so big. You need a good pair of applique scissors. I'm going to be just using my, uh, I'm going to be using Oh, I want you to cover the whole thing. Sorry. We're going to need the whole thing. I'm going to get my snips. My snips are like my favorite. And now we're going to just trim that left side. Trim that left side. Good. Next thing it wants you to do is uh, you're going to stitch. Place. Where am I? Okay. Stitch the trimming placement line. Trim the fabric close to the stitch line. Place the piece to fabric right side down with one edge um, on that line. So you're going to grab this fabric right here. So I am going to give it a little shot of spray but not the, you're spraying on the wrong side and the wrong side is gonna go up. So we're gonna put this down just like that. I sprayed this side, so that's the sticky side. And it's gonna show, so your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna just hold it down here with my, this is a good time to use a stiletto. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna fold it over. This side is the side that's been sprayed. And we're gonna just go ahead and fold it right over here. Piece two. Um, I'm not quite covering that, but we're gonna have a quarter inch seam allowance and so that should take care of that. Now we're gonna do the right side. So same thing, it's gonna go ahead and stitch that down. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray. Once you get in the groove. Okay, we're gonna trim to the right. Okay. 
We're gonna lay down. I sprayed on the wrong side. Wrong side goes up. And you know what? I'm gonna bring this one down the tiniest bit. Good time for We're going to flip that back. Maybe I didn't cut these right. Let me see. Where's my ruler? I cut them one and a half. Yeah, those are right. Okay. Now it's going to go ahead and stitch along the very bottom. And then we're going to trim. Mangy mutts. Go ahead and some people like to just lay down and press as well, which you can do. You can clap her. There we go. I'm gonna lay this piece down. This is um, this is the whole pumpkin right here. Actually, let's lay it down this way. I didn't trim this at all. This is a quarter inch seam allowance. Gonna give it a little shot of spray. It's just gonna cover this area. You could spray right here too. Kind of in the middle. I'm gonna fold this down. Oh my goodness. Look how cute that is. Okay. That is adorable. It just makes it. All right. Now it's gonna trim uh so a diagonal. We're gonna trim up and left. And this, now that we've uh, sewn that down, I'll go ahead and just clip this straight up. Oh my God. This is cute stuff. I love it. Love it. I love it. It's so sweet. And then we're going to lay down um, up here. We're going to lay down piece five. And piece five is one of the two by three pieces. Here's a two, did I say two by five, two by three. So this piece right here, let me spray it. There is no uh, right or wrong side. But I am gonna put this sprayed side up. So um, Poppy, who's really short, she's little. Somebody asked me if she was a mini, but she's a full size. She had a mini mom. Not not a mini Aussie mom, but her mom was on the smaller side for a standard Aussie. So Poppy is is kind of tiny. She uh, has finally though learned um, that she can drink out of the toilet bowl. <laughs> so when I see her, she does it where she rests her throat on the toilet seat and her front paws are off the ground. So she's really she's <laughs> she's kind of stretching it. Sorry. That kind of bent it, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to just kind of fold it down as we go. You see how he's kind of folded a little bit forward. I'm going to, I'm going to work with it. We need another two by three. Grab your two by three. Give it a little shot of spray. 
I love piecing in the hoop. It's fun. It's like coloring with fabric. We're going to center this. take this and fold it back there we go cute all right now it is going to yes that should be fine let's see which way are we going now oh if it's gonna go over here you gotta watch that and it might be good to just raise your foot height Let's do that for the next one, just so it doesn't scoop underneath that fabric. You could kind of see it was headed under there anyways. So I'm going to make my foot height a little bit taller. Good time to put a sticky note on your machine, though, too, so you remember to set it back. I'm going to go 0 0.10. Might, might have been able to get away with just 0 0.8, but I'm going to give this a little... I'm going to spray both of these, two of these. These are the two by threes because we're going to be doing the corners. And remember, sticky side goes up. So after it gets stitched down, you can fold it back. We're going to go this direction. Um, actually, let me see. That's seven and eight. Yeah, seven and eight are the two by threes. Seems like a little, little bit of overkill, but better, more than not enough. So center it to that stitch. Fold them back. Next one. This is your trim placement line first. I'm in love with this plaid. It is the cutest thing ever. I hope we get to see it in other projects. Okay. My piece is already sprayed. You're going to put it sticky side up. Let it sew the seam allowance. And then we're going to fold it back down. And then it'll say stay because we sprayed it and it'll be nice and taut. All right. It is sewing up uh, the left side. Trim to the left. And you're going to need one of the long skinny pieces. I don't have a lot of overhanging with that plaid. I'm just going to leave it. Grab this piece. Let me give these two a shot of spray. And we are almost done. That was fun. Peace pumpkins. Sticky side up, center to that stitch, let it sew the quarter inch. I'm going to let it kind of anchor that and I'm holding it at the very top. Because when it's, once it's sewn down on the bottom, then you just hold it at the very top and you just don't want that piece of fabric to kind of go too far left or too far right. Okay, we're going to fold that back. I did not shape flex these. You could if you want, because I do have a little bit of shadowing there. I'm just going to go with it. Oh, I don't know if this is long enough, but that's okay, because it's going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. I am like, cut mine a little bit too narrow, but we're okay, because it's going to sew a quarter inch from there. Anything more than that would have been an issue. So 
Someone's ringing the bell. Why are they ringing the bell? Okay. Make sure it anchors there, and then you can hold down on this end once it's anchored in. There's my quarter-inch seam allowance. And then we're going to just fold this fabric to the right. fold it over and last thing it's gonna do I think that was it because that was piece 10 let me look at my directions I was just kind of going for it um, stitch the seam stitch flip the fabric right side up stitch the outer tack down line and we are done oh my goodness this is so cute I just love it okay it's going to stitch the outside tack down line. Watch for any of the folds that it doesn't catch and just push it weird. There we go. So we could have done some shape flex. You got a little shadowing right there. And then we are also going to do the quilting. So don't forget about the quilting. I'm just going to leave it though. It looks so cute. I am gonna change my thread color though, and I'm gonna put the um, linen in. The pieces that would need it, if you wanna put Shape Flex on, would be, I think, these two and these two, and that's it, but I'm not even gonna do it. Okay, let me get out of this page. So it's saying it's over, but we need to go back and do this stitch right here. So I'm gonna touch in the orange just to make sure I don't overshoot. And there's my quilting stitch. And then go ahead and quilt away. I love this block. Makes my heart happy. I love the quilting. I like that the linen's gonna go on top of the pumpkin. Your batting's already down. And then we're gonna rehoop and do the next one. you could do is you could put a little fabric like hang a little bit more over that edge and then you wouldn't have it as much over here but that would work and that's gonna or you could put some uh, another layer of fabric so you could do some a couple of things this is cute And now we're done with this block. So let's go ahead. We're going to rehoop. I'm going to come over here. Is that adorable? And it's going to look cuter once we cut this off and it's like, you know, more squared off. We're going to rehoop. I'm going to cut this away because that outline is going to be close to our uh, where we're going to be cutting. Don't cut on that because I feel like you can already see that the fabric is like pulled in a little bit. You need double curved to get over the edge of that hoop. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out of the way. And that is like one of the cutest blocks ever. That fabric is adorable. Okay, let's rehoop. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the hoop, scoot it up.
I like a little bit of it to be poking out the top, just like that. We're going to have to open this up a little bit because now I have that bulk there of that design. There we go. Pull inward. And we're ready to go. Let's do the next one. Pieced pumpkin. And then once we're done with this, we'll have two pieced pumpkins. Same process. Remember, we're not at the beginning of our design though, so we have to look at our screen right here. We're all the way in the middle. We wanna be at the very beginning. You're just gonna hit zero. Zero is gonna take you there or else you can touch the very beginning or you can use your arrow. So there's lots of different ways. I'm just gonna to touch zero. We're back at the beginning. Um, let's go ahead and stitch out. This is gonna be placement for the batting. I'm gonna grab my batting fabric first and spray the bumpier side. You know what we're gonna be stitching. I'm just gonna leave that linen color in there. Let's put this right in the middle. We are gonna skip some steps. We don't need the tack down. We don't need the placement for the backing, the tack down for the backing or the quilting. We're gonna go right into the template. Remember this template's gonna be a little bit, we have to keep our finger on the start stop because it's definitely gonna be pushing our foot around. Or you know what we could do? Let's skip ahead because I mean, one stitch goes a quarter of an inch outside. The next stitch goes right on the line of the batting. If we could just skip to the part where, here, let's just go by hundreds. Oh, we're not even there. Okay. So you can see the cursor right here. I could just hold down my tents and do you see how it's hopping along? But I'm going to go plus 100. Plus tens. Now I want it to go the inner square. So see how it's doing the inner square? Okay. Plus one. Okay, I'm gonna go back one, and then it's gonna jump into the middle to do the template, and that's really what we want. We want that inner part. Oops, I guess I didn't need that very last stitch, but here we go, and this is what's gonna hold it down. I'm still gonna keep my finger on the start stop, just to make sure it doesn't do any weird stuff. And there's the template on the inside. We didn't have to worry about any of that outside stuff. There's a lot of freedom in how you stitch these things out. So here's our stem. We're gonna start with this piece right here. Let me give it a little shot of spray. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna spray the two side pieces that are also gonna be the little itty bitty squares as long as I can find them. Two sides. Were they all supposed to be this size? No, I should have, um, there they are. Here are my itty bitty ones right here. So I'm gonna spray all of these off. So I have three one and a half inch squares, one brown one and two linen ones. And this one is the only piece that we put face down over the first, um, the stem part, face down. Everything is going to be flip and fold. Holy impatient stitcher. These are sticky, sticky side up. Gonna let it stitch it. But 
Then we're gonna flip it. I'm not even looking at the instructions right now. Okay, flip it over. Then I'm gonna let it stitch this side. I might cut it a little bit smaller so then you don't see it. So you see how you see a really small line of that? Because I didn't quite trim it perfectly. Or It's not even that I didn't trim it perfectly. I did trim it perfectly. I'm just going to... Because I don't want that shadowing and I didn't shape flex it, I'm too lazy. Instead of putting it right there where you flip it and you can see a little bit of it, I'm just gonna fold it over just like that. Just takes a little forethought, which sometimes I have afterwards. We're gonna take this and flip it over. Now it's gonna sew the diagonal. This is your trim placement line. I have the door open so the dogs can go in and out, but that has let a fly in. Okay, we are gonna take our first, um, oh, we're gonna lay down this puppy right here. And you just want it a little bit over that line and this line and just make sure it covers. This is the big piece of flannel. shot of spray right here. That was kind of heavy handed. We're just going to fold this down. Oh my God. It's so cute. Okay. It's going to sew, show it, sew a diagonal and then we're going to trim. I didn't pre-cut this, but I should have because it's not like there's not much left for you to do anything with. So I could have pre-cut it. You're going to lay down some of the, these are the two by three. So I'm going to spray a couple of that uh, at a time. Spray. We'll do two at a time. I'm going to kind of lay this down so it covers over that dark piece. Sticky side up. Then I won't get that shadowing from the flannel showing through or the plaid. You don't have a ton of room, but you have a quarter inch on this side. Fold it back, no shadowing. That was Mr. Patrick Mulligan calling to give me some interesting information. All right. There we go. Stitch. I'm covering over the um, little bit of the uh, orange flannel that was sticking out. That way there'll be no shadowing. My sticky side is right here. 
it's up. When you're doing flip and fold, the only piece that goes down sticky is the very first piece, the stem. Everything else will be sticky side up and then flipped over. All right, bottom. If that foot is underneath that, you gotta watch it and stop it right now and flip the flannel. Oh no, I'm sorry, not the bottom, but bottom corner. Let's go ahead and trim that. Okay, you should have two more of the two and a half, twos by threes, so these. Spray them. Oh, wait. I want that to be a little bit forward just to cover the pumpkin so there's no shadowing. The back of the foot should make it so it glides over this, but you gotta watch that front of the foot a little bit. Sticky side up, center to that placement line, but cover over, cover over that, uh, the orange flannel. Here we go. It's gonna go up the left side. We're gonna trim. These are the two pieces that are gonna go down. So we're gonna give these a shot of spray. Okay, I'm gonna lay this down. I'm gonna lay it so the edge, so here is my, uh, where you're supposed to put it on the stitch that was marked that was just stitched. I'm gonna just move over a little bit more so that I'm covering over the, uh, the dark flannel too. That's gonna help me with the shadowing, but you're not gonna have much fabric to, um, to flip over. Just keep that in mind. It's going to sew right at the edge of that. Oh, this is cute. I just love this pieced pumpkin. Lay this down, center and over the edge. Okay, I'm gonna fold this back. And now it's gonna do the outline stitch around the whole thing. 
Make sure your finger doesn't get smashed down. Oh, I just caught that. It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because you are you need a quarter inch seam allowance and you have the um the muslin behind. And a quarter inch from here will go into the pumpkin. So not a worry. Let's do the quilting stitch. Don't forget that. So remember, now we have to go back here. I'm going to touch in my bar. Or else you can just use your arrows. Make sure you confirm on your screen. It's stitching what you want it to stitch. And we are going to be done with pieced pumpkins. I saved all of that so I could save like this much fabric. So when you go to do it, just cut it right in half and lay it down. choked cherry house next. keeps calling me and interrupting my video. Do you ever like, does your heart burst when you embroider some things? Like this pumpkin quilting design is making my heart burst. It's so sweet. Let's rehoop. Time for choke cherry. I'm feeling so productive today. It's making me excited. All right. You always want to leave one off. So if you want to cut that one off, you can just to keep everything more manageable. I usually cut from the back side so I can see where the uh, cut line's going to be, where. We're the outline where we're going to fussy cut to, and I'll just cut right in between. But you want to leave one on. That's what allows you to um, hoop closely. And let's get rid of this so it's not overhanging with our next design. And let's hoop up. I'm going to scoot this up, have a little bit hanging. Just going to pull in gently. I always run my hand over to make sure it's laying nice and flat. And we are now going to stitch out the choke cherry. And Patrick isn't here. I want to go ahead and post all of these, but uh, I'll have to have to do that um, maybe tomorrow. I'll have him combine those videos. Okay. So let's get our little sheet and our little packet. Here is, I thought I'd grabbed it. Here's my choke cherry fabric right here. Let's look at the guide and see what we're going to load in there for the Choke Cherry House um, Weather 4, 4x6 four horizontal. Let's go home. 
embroidery. Falling into autumn, quilting design first, weather four, four by six. I'm PES. Here's my four by six. There's only one four by six on mine because I have the abbreviated version. These are only the designs that are being used in this quilt. We're going to go ahead and add. I'm going back to my falling into autumn. Oops. Go back. That'll take you back one screen. This will return back to the embroidery screen. I need my embroidery files, PES, and I'm looking for the choke cherry house. And the choke cherry house is the one with the star on the top. So it's this one right here, and it says choke cherry. Very cute. Let's do that. Set. Um, let's check, and it says that it is centered. So we're centered, and quilting, quilting goes first. So you're going to do your quilting first. I'm going to go embroidery, layout, move. My hoop is on, so I'm just going to scoot it all the way up. Saves you like an inch. Say OK. And I'm going to bring up this screen where I can go backwards and forward stitches because that's what we do around here. For the quilting, it is showing, um, it looks like the light gray, but I think what I'm going to use is I'm going to use, oh, yeah. This is, I'm going to use this. I don't know if it really matches, but this is a warm gray four. Why don't I go ahead and put it in right now? I think that's what I have in my house are choke cherries. So this is the placement line for your batting. Let's get your fabric out. This should be what you have for this prop, this uh, block. I am gonna spray my batting and my background fabric. Spray them both, because we're gonna lay them both down at the same time. Here is my batting. And let's do our background fabric. And just center it. I kind of center it this way and this way, lay it down and whoop, I want to bring it down a little bit. You can kind of feel. And then push it down. We're gonna skip some steps. This is uh, the tack down for your batting, which we don't need. Placement for the back background, tack down for the background, which we are going to do. So we're going to stitch it down. So you're doing the first turquoise and the last orange, and then you're going to do the quilting stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start again. We'll do all the quilting. And the quilting's adorable. It looks like kind of like um, like the wind and leaves, which I would really enjoy some wind and leaves right now. Being full on in summer, having it hot. This is warm gray four that I'm using. I think we're also gonna need our
grabbing a bunch of my smaller vinyl pieces. I actually dropped my clear vinyl at the store and Michelle found it and gave it to me. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Is that just so cute? Next thing that's gonna happen after we tell Momo to be quiet, we are going to stitch the house placement and that's gonna be the biggest piece of uh, the red piece. And you should have shape flex on the back of all these pieces. So I'm just gonna take all of them all at once. I'm gonna put them all in my spray tent. And I'm gonna spray all of them. And then I'll just pull them as we go. This is that new Pinot color that we're going to be using. A lot of it's going to be um, uh, placement, tack down, placement, tack down, and then we're going to go back and do all the satin stitching. Okay, gonna hit start and just do the stitching for the background pinot for the red piece of house. Get a good pair of applique scissors so we can go ahead and trim these after we lay them down. and then we're gonna trim. Trim close to the stitch. Next is placement stitch for the door. The door is gonna be your piece of fabric that's two inches by three inches, which must be this, which is kind of like the, um, it is, uh, this is either the royal icing or it's coconut cream. I'm not sure which one it is. Make sure you lay it down the right way, um, that your shape flex is in the back and you didn't spray the wrong side, which sometimes I do. I love it when I hate, I don't hate it, but I'm not a huge fan of prepping, but I love that this is all done. All my pieces are ready to go. I just lay them down. I mean, that's kind of fun, right? Grab and go. The better thing would be if Patrick did all my prep work for me and didn't go mountain biking anymore. 
and then I could just do all the fun stuff, just the stitching. Now we're gonna put down the star. The star is gonna be this uh, lilac piece of fabric, or this is tea berry. I think that's the equivalent of the, hang on. Yeah, stitch the star placement line. It did the square first and I was like, wait a minute, is that the window? Again, color doesn't make a difference. For some reason, didn't cut, but that's okay. Cover over that star. Tack down, and then we're gonna trim, and then we're gonna put the window down, and then it's ready to do all our satin stitching. I'm so excited to see what it's gonna look like um, when we put those like little garlandy wreaths on. Those are kinda cute. All right, now we're gonna take this piece, stitch this down. It is showing on my screen a placement line, turquoise. I don't want that, because we know where it's going. There's my tack down. Wasn't sure if it was gonna, because it I mean, it's the square, square in the center, so I thought it's probably not gonna do another placement, but it did. Okay, these are the colors that I'm going to be using right here. Pinot, ginger, tea berry, coffee, and shadow. I'm going to add that to the supply list as well. So let me go ahead and stitch out the Pinot first. And then, of course, I use this, the warm gray four. So those are the colors that I used in this block. I don't think I used anything else. Ooh, checking out the cover to my Pinot. It's the first time I'm using it. Go ahead and pause this. All right, this is three minutes of satin stitching.
you might hear some other stitching in the background. I just fired up my multi-needle too. Might as well stitch on two machines instead of one. And that one is just set up to go. Then we're gonna do the roof. I'm gonna do that in coffee. And while we're sitting here, or while I'm sitting here, I think I'm gonna add those thread colors into my spreadsheet. Okay, I'm actually gonna stop because I just remembered that I still have my 7011, let me go ahead and cut. I had put a 70, a 7011, 7010 needle in um, that I'm gonna be using for the uh, treats for my boo event and I still have that in there. So let me go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna pause this so I can change out my needle. Okay, we are good, whoops except we're not threaded. I just put uh, an 8012 Microtex in, which I tend to stitch with a 7511 Madeira anti-glue needle or a, oh, look at that. Do you see that? Holy cow, had no idea that had happened. And that could be a result of, and I thought I had heard something. That could be a result of uh, it getting nicked. So this happens sometimes. Your thread might get nicked and then it starts to coil. And you can tell it kind of got a little bit skinny there, but it's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna leave it. You better not be looking too closely at my satin stitch. Satin stitch, if there is a stitch that I'm gonna take out and redo, satin stitch is probably the one I prefer the most because it's wide and you can just run a seam ripper straight down it. So that makes it easy. Okay, it's doing the roof now. That's another three minutes.
All right, let's go ahead and do the outline of the door. I'm gonna do that in ginger, which is that new, like super lovely mustard, darker than sand, which was, you know, my favorite. And that one goes really well with uh, the muse thread, or I think that actually stands for mustard. So let's go ahead and out outline the door. This is two minutes of stitching. Okay, next one, we are gonna stitch out tea berry. I have so little time to really stitch that I'm feeling like I need to multitask. And so you're gonna hear some of that other stitching. So we're gonna stitch out tea berry, um, and then we're gonna place the window vinyl, and then we're gonna stitch out shadow. This is five minutes of stitching.
Right. Now it wants you to lay down, um, place the window vinyl over the window, and we're going to stitch the window tack down, which is going to be in shadow. Before you do that, you want to check and just make sure there's no stray threads. Um, like, for instance, this thread right here, I would go ahead and cut that. You just want to make sure this is nice and clean. Actually, that's not even going to affect it because the window's going to go right there, but you know what I mean. Make sure there's nothing on your vinyl and nothing on your fabric that's going to be get sandwiched in between. Be a cute time to fussy cut something. That window, instead of putting in that fabric, you could have fussy cut something that would have looked adorable, like a kitty cat in the window if you had like little kitty fabric. I grabbed a whole bunch of vinyl pieces. Here they are. For a second, I thought, where did I put them? These are all leftovers, and I just want to have a piece that's just big enough to cover over that window. Ooh, we could do this right here. That'll work out perfectly, right? There's a little fold in it. Let's do it right here. thread out of the way. And then you're going to trim the vinyl as desired. We're going to do this house and then I'm going to do the pumpkin spice house and then I'm going to take a little break. gonna stitch down there let me make sure this is all out of the way and it is sorry you don't need to listen to the hammering of my multi-needle I'm gonna go ahead and I was like, well, if it's not too annoying, maybe I could just stitch on that too, but it might be too annoying. Okay, I am going to trim just outside of this.
It's good. And we are done. This is Choke Cherry House. Not sure why that thread didn't quite catch, but I'm just going to trim him. So he's not poking up. Might have to get my tweezers out. This is Choke Cherry House. He's done. Let's rehoop and let's do the last house. Good. Here we go. We're going to st uh, stitch out Pumpkin Spice House. Here are my fabrics for it. Um, we're going to do that background quilting again. So I am going to choose Warm Gray 4 for my quilting. Um, other colors you're going to need Pumpkin, pumpkin Spice. I would go ahead and grab um, the Satin House out Outline. I would do that in burnt orange because that's a pretty burnt orange. For the brown, I've been using brunette, although what came in the kit was going to be dark brown. So you can choose whatever is best for you. Um, there is going to be the little pumpkin and that right here. We could either go Muse or Ginger. I'm going to go Ginger. I've been using the Ginger. It's so cute. And uh, for the outline of the, what did I do for the outline of the window? Um, looks like they're having you do, um, well, that looks to me uh, just like linen. So here's my linen for the outline of the window. Shadow for the, the bean stitch that goes around it. And my shadow's in my machine. Hang on, let me grab it. Okay, here's Shadow, and I think that's going to be it. I think we should be good to go. I'll add those colors right there to the spreadsheet, and let's go ahead and let's get stitching. First thing we have to do is we have to rehoop. So, again, we're going to pop this out. If you want to take off the last embroidery, you're going to leave this one. You can pop out the last one. That's just my neighbor. It sounds like they're sawing something. We're going to pop that out. We're going to rehoop. Usually my dogs are like losing it anytime any of the neighbors are out, which makes me so sad because how annoyed would you be if your neighbor's dog always barked at you? And that's what mine do. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but they're also understanding it. And then I always bring them in. And then I, we always have the talk. It's not polite to, to bark at your neighbors. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go shut my door. Hang on a second. All right, let's go to the machine. Let me grab my thread colors. Come on over here. It is so hard for me to stay neat and organized. It's pretty impossible. And I work hard at it. Here we go. This is, I think it's orange spice, right? Let's put in our design. I was just adding to this to the spreadsheet. Okay, we're gonna go home. It's gonna clear the screen, embroidery. I have to go to my pocket, my, oops, I'm in the bottom USB. Falling into autumn, we are gonna load our quilting design first, which is weather four, four by six. Weather four, four by six. I'm PES, four by six, set. We're gonna add, and we're gonna add Spumpkin Spice House. <laughs> Spumpkin, I think I did just say that. Pumpkin Spice House. Embroidery files, PES, and Pumpkin Spice House. That's the golden one, here it is has the pumpkin in the front and we're going to go ahead and do embroidery. Let's uh, actually look at our instructions and just make sure we're centered, centered after quilting. So we do the quilting first and um, we can go ahead and snug it all the way up. My hoop is on. I'm going to go lay out, move, move it all the way up. Okay. And let's get stitching. So I'm going to touch this so I can go forward and backward stitches. I have nothing in there right now. Let's go ahead and put linen or warm gray four, which I love this warm gray. It's like almost like a pink, beige, gray. It's a little bit of everything.
Okay, I am gonna spray my batting as well as my background fabric. I'm just cruising along here. Here's the bumpy side of my batting that gets sprayed first. That's probably Patrick. Well, it appears as though my stitching didn't stitch because I just looked at my screen because I've lost my place because Patrick keeps calling, but um, it's on orange now, which means it should have done a placement stitch and I can kind of see the little holes from where the needle went. I'm surprised that it didn't stop because my sensor should be on. Let's check. So, ooh, foot height. Let's return that back. And my sensor and that could have something to do with it where am i at Ooh, time for service time for service don't tell anyone upper sensor is on okay things that can make your upper sensor not work would be well i could have cleaned been cleaning it out a little too aggressively um i like to do things aggressively but i'm gonna go ahead and Pull up my bobbin thread again and before I do that why don't I just pop this off and just take a quick quick peek in here and see if because I was uh, taking that brush and rubbing it around pretty hard um, those piles need to be there I don't know where the sensor is but I'll have to have Patrick I'll talk to him about it whoops this goes in after your plate there we go and cover and thread and let's go back this goes forward this goes back and you can confirm that's my placement stitch should be in turquoise and hopefully it catches this time and it did which actually I really didn't have to have it catch because I know where that fabric's gonna go. I could have just laid it down. Okay, my batting is sprayed. Let me spray my background fabric. I told Patrick, don't call me, I'll call you. You know, we work together, so we're with each other, what? 24 7 and then when we're not together we still love talking to each other because we're so in love okay let me lay this down too I'm gonna skip some steps we're skipping the background tack down we're skipping the placement for the background we're tacking down the background and then we will also do the quilting and this stitch is really nice because this is kind of what you would fussy cut to so I always like this stitch it's also nice if you do it in a contrasting color which mine isn't but it's easier to see them white on white I think it when it's white on white it's hard to see but any other color is pretty easy and then you're just gonna go ahead and do the quilting I was telling him how productive I've been this weekend. So these are the pieces we're gonna be laying down. I'm gonna put them in my spray tent and I'm gonna spray the back of all of them. These should be stabilized with ShapeFlex 101. There we go. This is the one you have to be careful of. Make sure that you're putting the, um, that off-white fabric down with um, the shape lights up. It's easy to confuse it. I don't know if you could see any of that. I bet you just saw my big fat hand. And then we're just gonna do placement line, tack down, trim.
doesn't sound right. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're standing across the room. But I heard that. Let's see if I got a little nick in my thread. Nope. Thread looks good. Let's see if my bobbin... Something definitely didn't sound right. Bobbin looks okay, but I'm almost running out. So just in case it was getting caught, I'm going to be done with that bobbin. Let's put a new one in. Something didn't sound right. And when your mama ears tell you something's not right, eh, trust them. I'm gonna go back 20 stitches. I usually go back 10 or 20. And thread it. I'm gonna go back. better. Alrighty. I can't believe how much more I still have to do. I've got to do warm snuggles, the apples, the hayride, all the filler blocks, um, piece everything together, press P, uh, and then piece everything together and then I'll be caught up. So let's see what we can get done. Um, but this will make me feel a little less overwhelmed. Pumpkin Spice House. We are going to be doing um, placement, tack down, placement, tack down. So let's just get started. I'm going to just leave the warm gray. First thing it wants to do is placement for the orange house. So just grab your orange fabric. This is kind of where it messed up. So I'm happy because it's going to cover that over. And again, mine is already sprayed and ready to go. Here's my tack down. Go ahead and trim. Okay, placement for the roof. This will be tack down for the roof.
placement for the door. Um, make sure you look at your fabric. This is tack down for the door. The combination of the curved scissors with holding your fabric up lets you get really nice and close. This is placement for the windows. Again, this would be a really fun time to fussy cut. I wish I had something fun to put in the window. Wouldn't that be fun to like fussy cut some photos of like your kids or your family? You can print them on, um, on fabric. You know how you can run fabric through your printer? That would be fun. Tack down for the windows. See those little threads? You're definitely going to want to trim those because those are going to get, well, we'll see if the satin stitch takes care of them, but you just don't want them under the vinyl. Now we're going to trim the windows. Okay, and placement for, I think it's like a pumpkin. It's like that cute little pumpkin. I'm gonna lay this down. And then tack down for the pumpkin. And then we're ready to satin stitch. I think you have to be perfect with the trimming of that pumpkin because there's going to be a satin stitch that goes around it. We're going to have 21 minutes of satin stitching, or I mean the rest of the stitching. This is a 21 minute stitch out. We've done seven minutes of the stitching. Okay. First thing it wants you to do is stitch the house satin outline. That's going to be in burnt orange. Which is so perfect for fall, right? This is three minutes of stitching. So while it's doing the stitching, I'm gonna be working on some supply lists. Thank you. 
right, we're going to do around the windows now, and I'm going to do that in linen. I'll do linen. It'll look gorgeous. And this is going to be five minutes of stitching. I'm getting ready for, um, getting ready to stitch out, uh, is it called Warm Snuggles? The chair. I'm just going to power through. And we'll see tomorrow if we can power through with uh, my other homework. And then um, maybe we could do our sew along on Friday. I would just love to be caught up. This is going to outline the doors and the windows. Snuggles, we need to do that in either a 7x12 or an 8x12 hoop, so I'm going to hoop up for that. After it finishes doing the outlines on this, it is going to do, we're going to place the vinyl down. So vinyl is going to go down next and you need shadow. So find your piece of vinyl.
and I'm looking and it looks like it covered over all of those little stray threads. So I'm just gonna change my thread out to shadow and that's gonna do that outline stitch. Shadow is like a dark gray. So if you don't have shadow, just pick any like charcoal gray. Let's see if this will reach. Um, yeah, that'll do. Let's use this. Once it stitches this, we're gonna have to stop, press stop. I think it wants to go to the doorknob, but there it might stop for us, but just pay attention. Isn't it funny how much of a difference an outline stitch makes? Perfect, looks so good. I'm just gonna go ahead and let me go ahead and get this out of the way. I'm just gonna trim it up. And it's clear vinyl. Does not have to be perfect. And it looks adorable. I love it. And just hit start it is going to do the doorknob. We're going to use that same shadow. And then we'll put in the ginger for the outline on the pumpkin. Maybe I'll stop it here and have a little divide and then I'll do the, uh, we'll do the snuggle chair and I'll do the filler blocks. So we're going to do the outline of the pumpkin and then we will put in the dark brown. I've been using brunette. We'll put that in for the uh, roof outline as well as the pumpkin stem. Stop it there because there's that thread that looks like it might be stitched down on both sides. Got it.
let's put in brunette or dark brown. Dark brown will be in your kit. I just didn't have it, so I've been using brunette, and I ordered dark brown, so I'm interested to see, because brunette's pretty dark to me, so I'm interested to see what a difference there is between the two. Oh my goodness, doesn't that pumpkin look adorable? Okay, let's stitch out that pumpkin stem. And then we'll also do the uh, the roof outline. And then we're done with this one. Gonna hit start for the roof outline. And I am hooped and ready for the warm snuggles. Step is step 18. It says do not stitch this step. This line is for design placement only. We are done with Pumpkin Spice House. I'm going to end the video here, but I am going to keep filming and I'll, you can join me back here again for warm snuggles.